So, um, sex and the course in miracles. Um, so when I when I was in uh, when I was in uh, before spiritual work when I had inflated ego, so I saw the world. I mean, the way my ego would see things is what's in the world special. I wanted special things from the world. So I wanted special donuts to to lighten up my world. I wanted special women. I wanted special sex. I wanted a special career. Um, so there's all these projections of specialness. So the course is mainly. Uh, as I start to do the course, what the course is doing is letting go of my projections of specialness into the, into the world. So, now as I start to let, let let's say if I let, start to make women less special and the idea of sex less special, i.e. Uh, a woman is meaningless, just as meaningless as a chair, which is just as meaningless as a plant. Um, the, the, the belief that sex is good is uh, it's, uh, God did not create that belief, so it's not real. God did not create sex, so it is not real. So the, the way it's held within my consciousness, what a woman is and what sex is, we're starting to delete that ego interpretation and that ego, uh, those ego belief systems of, of, uh, and the collective belief systems associated with women and sex are being released from the ego as you do the Course in Miracles. Also, the Course in Miracles is letting go of the idea that anything outside of yourself can be a solution for anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, so money, you know, security doesn't come from money. Security doesn't come from career. It comes from source. So um, love doesn't come from a woman. It, uh, and happiness doesn't come from sex. It comes from source. So as you, as you start doing the, applying these lessons to different areas of life, uh, you're starting to let go of the way that the ego relates to these activities and these ideas, like, I need a job for money, uh, I, need, I need a woman for a special love, um, I need sex to feel good. So all of these, these and as you're doing that, your level of consciousness is increasing. So you're starting to feel a sense of inner happiness and your love is going uh, from addictive to, um, to unconditional, i.e. the chair is just as lovable as the teddy bear, which is just as lovable as you are, you see. They're all equally lovable. It's not like one is more special than the other. Now, as you, so as you go up, you're, you're, gonna ha you're gonna be more and more loving and less and less fearful and more and more present in all your relationships. So you could say we're going from special relationships to more holy experiencing, or even relationship disappears in the final uh, analysis because there's no me and other. But anyway, so as you go up, so then uh, things are becoming more present and more imbued with love. So in the lower levels of the ego, it's like there's a lot of feeling of separation and these things are gone to uh, to cheer one up, you know, if I had a if I had a girlfriend, it's going to be great. Or if I could have sex today, that's going to be great, you know. And and they so you're more sort of addicted, more needing, more desperate for these things. From you know, it's like you're feeling separation. So you're doing these things to get a sense of wholeness. If I had a girl, then I'd feel whole. If I could have sex, I'd feel whole. So that's the kind of separated type of relating from a separation. So you're dismantling this by saying the woman is meaningless, sex is meaningless, and you're also starting to get more happy, let's say, in yourself. You know, you're not going to be needy of these things, uh, uh, and the love is going to become more and more unconditional. Uh, so as this goes up, the, now as your consciousness increases, uh, you're automatically the relationship will be different, you see. Because when you're de feeling deeply separated, your desperation and need for these things is very high. But as soon as you start doing the Course of Miracles, like if you've done the Course of Miracles for one year and you start to have a relationship, that relationship will be very different to the relationship you, you would have had with a woman mm -hmm. the year before. You know, you're going to be more present. Uh, when the woman's gone, you're not going to think of her so much. But when you're there, you're going to be very present with her. Things are going to be start to be less and less from the head and more and more spontaneous, you know, uh, and, and more one is living in the present moment. As you go higher up, 
you, uh, when you get to the highest levels, your idea of you being a separate thing that needs to think and that is constantly in the future and the past starts to dissolve. Your whole basis of ego starts to dissolve. So then what is the relationship about? Well, the relationship then becomes orchestrated by the universe. So actually there is no you that is seeking sex or, and, uh, or wanting love from a special person. But it's more like things emerge out of the universe as the universe would have it emerge. So everything is spontaneously happening in the now, but there is no body there that's trying to orchestrate it to make sure it works in a special way. So, um, so I'll come into the, uh, I'll talk about the whirling dervishes. You know the you know the whirling dervishes. Everyone knows the whirling dervishes. So that no 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 you don't. Know. So the the Sufis, the Sufis they do this dancing, and you, when you see the dancing, you realize there's no dancer doing the dancing. It's like the universe is now. It's like the absence of the ego, and then it, they go into a source of infinite energy, and it's like the and the universe dances the dancer. It's like uh, also something similar to when you go to st states where suddenly everything is happening effortlessly and there's no person there. It's like everything is orchestrated by, by the universe. So if, if, uh, if the universe can dance a dancer, well, the universe can have, the universe can or orchestrate a relationship as well. So at the different levels of consciousness, as, as the ego's uh, sense of separation and projections of specialness onto objects and activities dissolves, you know, there's greater presence and greater oneness and more spontaneity. There's less of an individual orchestrating the relationship and more of the universe orchestrating the universe. Also, the reactions become more loving and present, whereas more in the ego, they're more coming from a place of lack and need and control to get what is perceived as required for, uh, for some relief, you see. So... Um, so it changes in, in meaning, uh, that might be a word, as, as you go up in your spiritual development, because you're, you're releasing uh, the ego's uh, capacity. So, if, you know, any, a special relationship or an ego-projected relationship to that of one more that is present or more, coming, more being orchestrated by the universe or a holy relationship or even an enlightened relationship, well, there's no you or the other. Everything is just happening in the now, orchestrated out of the universe. So those were the di different levels. So even though the course doesn't, I mean, the course talks about magical things, you know, uh, special things and magical things or special relationships, I think. So uh, like a magical belief is like, if I had a relationship, I'll be whole. Or if I could have sex, I'll be more happy or something like that, you see. So you're letting those ideas go. And then you're getting, you, you, you know, your, your sense of happiness is in the now. It doesn't mean that to an outside observer, relationships seem to be happening. But the experience of what you are and what the other is changes as you let go of the ego. Is that, is that clear? Yeah.